As a small little youngster running around, did you read wholesome children's stories with beautiful messages? Or did you read nightmare fuel novels filled with evil and villainous activities? Trick question, they are the same thing. These same books you love so much are packed to the brim with lies operating in their own dark, twisted, alternate realities. These are places where James can encounter abnormally large fruit and where hippos can just eat cake on rooftops at will. Whose world are we living in? Gen Z's, this is why, this is the reason guys. I bet right now you're connecting the dots and you're like, oh my gosh, this actually makes sense a little bit. Let us explore these books and try and figure out together what the hell is going on. I'm also gonna suggest a new titles for some of these books that just better suits reality. These are some children books we need fixed. We're going on a bear hunt. This whole book where it's, we're going on a bear hunt, I'm gonna catch a big one. That sucks, that all, that's all terrible. That is, that is completely terrible. Tell me this, how do you expect to catch a bear? No equipment, no experience, no knowledge of where you're going. Three out of four of you are children, and you still think you can take on a bear, let alone come back alive. My friend Joe's gonna enlighten us on what a bear sounds like. Make sure your baby's okay. <coughs> That's some pretty scary noises, let alone what he does when he grabs you. And you've also done some stupid things. You went straight through the flowing river. That's how children's die. That's how children's drown. Ah, uh, wink, wink, bridge to Terabithia. They also find themselves stuck in a snowstorm. They are still wet from the river and then muddy from, they went through this mud and now they're at below zero temperature. How they don't have frostbite and died, I can't tell you. Maybe they do have the capability of taking on a bear. Until they find a cave, a gloomy, narrow cave. They all enter the cave and what do they find? A bear. This bear is obviously more dangerous than the three children because they're the weakest. When you think about it, they're the first ones off the Titanic. The bear chased them all the way home. It's knocking on their front door. I just want to mention they left the door open as well. They had to go back down the stairs and close it again. These people are not thinkers. That father should be prosecuted with child endangerment. You're a bad dad. But hey, what a fun little story that is. I'm glad we've all come to the conclusion that no one should go on a bear hunt, especially children. Let's look at the facts. Brown bear, black bear, grizzly bear, polar bear, all of them will kill you. I'll even include the weakest of the bears. It's not even technically a bear, koala bear. And you know what they have? Chlamydia. So what I'm saying is don't hit any of the bases with any of the bears. They'll all kill you. A better book title is I'm staying away from all bears because some have STDs. I think it would also provoke a healthy conversation. Book two, motherfucker! I knew an old lady who swallowed a fly. Oh, do you now? This is a very deceiving book. At the start, it's a funny little story. Like a Nana has a fly and a glass of wine. She takes a sip and she might swallow the fly. Ha ha, that is a funny story. And then we take it to levels beyond comprehension. This bitch becomes carnivorous up to the point where it is dangerous. The sequence that she eats these goes as followed. A fly, a spider, a bird, a cat, a dog, a goat, a cow, and then a horse. To actually proper catch what she's put inside her, um, they all have to be live. She's eating all these animals slash insects alive. Right now I'm calling up Peter because there's serious animal destruction. Also side note, it doesn't make sense that she's an old lady because when you get old, you can't chew your food properly. So you have to like eat softer liquids to wash it down and stuff like that. Maybe she's just like kind of guzzling them down like a tablet, but that still doesn't make sense. She's gonna have to dislocate her jaw. I'm just not even gonna think about the fine print of this because it's freaking me out. If I add up all of the weight of the animals that she consumed, it comes to roughly 1,082 kilograms, or over a ton. Over a ton of live animals. That is heavier than a 1992 Volkswagen Golf. Oh my God, how is this woman even alive, RN? If you're watching this old woman, that means right now. Use it, when you use it when you text. But Kale, this book isn't about a lady just eating lots of animals and gaining a massive amount of weight. It's about teaching children sequences. What sequences are we learning? Is this animal hierarchy? 
If so, I don't know a single dog that would take an order from a goat. The believable title would be, a lady drank a fly out of her wine glass and nothing else. Book fixed. Book number three, Wombat Stew. This one right here was my primary school favorite. I remember my primary school teacher, Miss Tipping, just reading to the class about Wombat Stew. This one now I'm thinking about it, super Australian. I don't know if this one hit internationally. If you're not familiar with the story, it pretty much goes that the dingo wants to eat one of his friends. He chooses the wombat and he also decides to make a stew out of him. All of the other Australian animals catch on that the dingo is trying to eat the wombat and put him in his stew. So they mislead the dingo by throwing bad things into his stew that he's prepping. Such as bugs, gum nuts, mud, feathers, just all types of stuff like that. And then when the dingo catches the wombat and is about to kill him, the other animals say, oh, you've got to try the stew first before you put the wombat in there. So he tries it and because it's so yucky, he makes a sour face and just runs off into the bush because he's so sick and they never see him again, which tells me he's probably poisoned and may or may not have died. There also, there's a lot of fat shaming in this book. The dingo repeatedly calling out the wombat for being a fat wombat. And that just wouldn't fly these days. That's not cool, dingo. Now I understand this is fiction, but really what it should be called is Dingo eats whatever he wants. That, that's the title, that's it. Because he's not making a stew, he's just ripping the head off a wombat. Because he's hungry. I'd like to hit you with some books that I call No Shit Sherlock Books, because it really should go without saying. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Piranhas don't eat bananas. I just ate my friend. Are we there yet? Obviously not, because you're asking the question, you little shit. I truly believe that anything can be a children's book. You just combine two things that wouldn't usually be together, smack them there, and then you have the best selling children's book of all time, apparently. Hey Siri, tell me a random animal. I found this on the web. Random animal generator, here we go. All right, um, let's go. Number one, dragon. Hey Siri, tell me a random food. Which one? Okay, random food generator. Let's go here. And... Here's what I found. All right, and, ran and we have a random food of taco. I've got dragon and taco. Dragon, taco, book. We According to Google Books, a number one New York Times best-selling phenomenon, this deliciously funny read aloud is an unforgettable tale of new friends and the perfect snack that will make you laugh until spicy salsa comes out of your nose. This picture book is literally called Dragons Love Tacos. Have I just been living under a rock where this is an obvious children's book? I've never heard of this. I literally made up two things. I literally found two random things and it's Dragon Love Tacos random generator and I got two things given first off dragon is not an animal but still a point case closed case closed I'm looking at the reviews right now some of these are pretty mixed for example night terrors are guaranteed with this book that's a good start dragons invade homes and burn them down the solution was to feed them a ton of tacos beforehand but that didn't help. The lonely kid and his dog needed tacos without salsa, something extremely difficult to achieve. The happy ending was to see the dragons begin to build homes for the kid. No families or other kids in sight, just the dragons. Wow. I know what I'm reading tonight. I've also looked up failed children's books. These are hilarious. Listen to these. All my friends are dead. Flabby cat and slobby dog. Walter the farting dog. Everyone's got a bottom. They're gonna chop your balls off. <laughs> Plot twist. These are all real books except the last one. Okay? They're all real books. The chop your balls off, that's, that is a fake one, but I just thought that was really funny. I do recommend you look it up on Pinterest. Failed children books. They are hilarious. They do not disappoint. Why I blab for a little bit, I'll just leave some on the side there for you. This is the end of the video. I just want to say I appreciate all the love in the comment section. When you guys hit subscribe, it really helps me out. Thank you for doing that. I read all the comments, like I love them all. Uh, I don't even know what to say, but just um, I'm gonna keep making videos and I hope you enjoy your books. You should read them because most kids these days can't read. 
It's a real problem. Anyway, see you later. I'm gonna keep making more videos. Bye. See ya. Enjoy the books.